Hello, I'm on my second leg on my way to VidCon. I'm currently in the Riyadh International Airport in Saudi Arabia. My next trip will be from here to JFK. I'll be boarding in about an hour um, on Saudi Airlines. And today I just really want to do a quick couple things. I want to do a YouTuber, uh, small YouTuber questions. And I also want to say I hit 600 subscribers this week, so pretty psyched about that. Thank you, everybody. So, I guess I'll start with the, I got a, a, a list of questions here, so I will read them off. So, the first one is, what is your name and the name of your channel? Well, my name is Brian, and the channel is Running For Your Life 365. What does the name of your channel mean? Um, Running For Your Life 365 has a tag also, fighting anxiety and training for a zombie apocalypse. It has a couple key meanings. Um, anxiety, zombies, apocalypse are all symbols of fighting uh, mental illness and mental health. Trying, trying to survive mental illness, mental health. Learn to confront your fears and problems. Battle to overcome them and prepare for the next battle. Um, zombies, uh, it's definitely just something fun, something that me and my family often just talk about. What will we do in a zombie apocalypse? Um, I think a lot of other families do that. So it's, we, we end up watching all the, um, um, all the zombie movies, zombie shows and all that together. So it's a family thing there. Um, running is all about cardio. Uh, Number one rule is surviving a zombie apocalypse is cardio. Um, it also means that you want your mind and your body prepared for whatever comes its way. Um, running is also exercise. Exercise is good for clearing your mind, um, getting your body healthy. So it's not the only way to help fight mental illness, but it, exercise is always a beneficial thing for mental illness. Um, and running has always been a big part of my family's life and it definitely helps with anxiety. 365 is the number of days in a year, so that's pretty easy. Um, where am I from originally? That's a good one. Um, originally I'm from New Jersey in the United States, but I've lived in Boston, I lived at, in New Jersey, New York, um, down at the Jersey Shore, Washington DC, I lived in Nairobi, Kenya. I lived in Brazil, um, capital of Brazil, Brasilia. I lived in Manama, Bahrain. And so I guess I really don't know where I'm from anymore. Um, a little bit of everywhere. Why did you start a YouTube channel? Uh, the YouTube channel started as a way to connect between me and my son. Um, he has a YouTube channel, so it's something I started um, out of interest with him. What is your channel about? Um, pretty much everything and anything in my life. Um, anxiety, mental health, invisible uh, illnesses, traveling, and food. Uh, I love food. Um, who is my target audience? Really kind of anybody who's kind of stuck with depression, anxiety, suffering, um, like invisible illnesses um, I I think that would probably be my key target you I mean although I don't talk about it a lot in my channel it's it's always there underlying somewhere try to be positive try to give some motivation um, my Instagram and Twitter that focuses more on the positive side of it um, the YouTube side of it is just more having fun um, just kind of showing you can live a normal life while you while you deal with those things. Um, what do I need to, or what would I like to achieve with my channel? I think the benchmark that I would like to do is get monetized. I don't think I'll ever be making money off this channel, um, but I think it's a benchmark where I'm like, oh wow, I got monetized. So it's like you made it. 
Um, don't know if that makes any sense. But it's the benchmark that I would like to see if I ever get there. Who knows? Um, top three favorite YouTubers. This is interesting because I'm going to try to break it out. Um, big name YouTubers, I would say Liza Koshi, Boogie2988, and Sugar Pine 7 uh, They're probably the three of the bigger ones that I watch right now. I also like um, Colleen, who does Miranda. I actually watch more of her Colleen stuff than I watch her Miranda stuff. Um, I think she's interesting. Um, Medium-sized YouTubers, I like um, Butterside Down. I think he is very unique, um, very impressive, with the stories he tells. And then my favorite small YouTubers would probably be the Moa380, um, Abby Lyons, and the Regal Sisters. Um, three people that I, I follow, I enjoy their videos. I, I tend to watch every video that they make. Um, they're all pretty good. Who inspired you to start your channel? Kind of answered this one already, my son. Um, he started his channel, Little Roan, L-I-L-R-O-N-E. And he even got over a million views. So he did pretty well. Um, it's a small channel, but he, he does good videos. He actually edits a lot of my videos sometimes, the better ones, obviously. Um, and then if I could collab with anybody, it would probably be the smaller YouTubers. Uh, the MOA 380, 380, Abby Lyons, or Regal Sisters. You I mean, again, I like them, they're, they're interesting. Uh, not really imagine myself ever collaborating, collaborating with the big people. That's just out of my realm. Three reasons anyone should subscribe to your channel. Well, if you like food, if you like to travel and if you like to have fun uh, three good reasons for me and it's just really a lot of what my show is about i try to keep my videos short um usually less than four minutes this one's going to be longer sorry and i try to post at least once a week um and that's my goal on the channel i don't want to do long videos i i guess i don't care about play time that much i just know myself that if i see a video like 30 minutes, two hours, I'm not gonna watch it. No, I'm never gonna watch the whole thing. My time is, I'm too busy doing other things to uh, watch two hours of videos. Sorry. Um, what is the favorite thing about YouTube committee? What is your favorite thing about the YouTube community? There you go. I think, um, I think most people are true. I think most people are sincere. Um, again, this I'm going to VidCon. This is my second year of VidCon. I think it's my son's third or fourth year of VidCon. I think it's just a, I think it's all in all, it's just a good community. I think most people are really sincere. Um, the small YouTuber community, uh, hashtag I am a creator community, they're all very supportive. They're all good people. Um, so yeah, I think that's what I like about the YouTube community. My least favorite thing is probably everybody who's a creator or a um, small YouTuber is the people who just are trying to do sub for sub. They're just, they don't really care. They're just subbing you to hope you sub back and then they delete you. It's just, I don't know, it's kind of silly. Um, I will usually sub somebody if they sub me, but that's just to see if I like their content. Um, if they keep my interest and stuff like that, I will stay watching them. If not, then I probably won't continue watching them. Sorry, I. if you look at my account, I have over probably a thousand people that I subscribe to. I'll go through and see what pops, what I'm interested in, and then I will uh, I'll watch it. Um, if you notice also on my account that I do almost everything pretty public, so you see what I watch, you see what I like, you see who I subscribe to. Um, so I'm, I try to be an open book like that. What do you think you could bring to the YouTube community that isn't already there? Well, obviously old age, yeah. And maybe a bald fat guy. So that's probably about it. Not a lot more. 
Yeah, sorry about that. Um, and sorry YouTube, old people ruin everything, so I'll probably ruin YouTube in the wrong, long way. Um, three things we should know about you. I'm probably honest to a fault. I'm way too opinionated. Don't ask me a question because you'll probably get an answer. And I eat way too much. So those are probably the three things that's about me. Sorry. What do you think is the hardest thing that will be about becoming a YouTuber? Uh, being interesting. I'm probably a little boring too. Nothing exciting in my life. Um, I do travel and I do eat. And that's probably as exciting as my life gets. Um, what do you think the most rewarding thing will be? Talking about traveling and food, because again, it's what I like to do. And I mean, I think it'll be rewarding for me to be able to go back and look at videos of, hey, remember when I parachuted? Or hey, remember when we went uh, dune bashing in Dubai? Or stuff like that. I kind of wish I have had videos of my trips in Kenya and Brazil, because I would like to look back at those now. So I think that's gonna be rewarding for me. Do you see yourself being on YouTube for a long time? I hope so. You I mean, it's kind of like a, a little bit of a diary too. So I'm hoping that I will be able to produce stuff, leave it for a long time. Maybe my kids, grandkids, who knows? Maybe other people will be able to watch in the future who knew me. Do you have any tips or advice for other people starting a YouTube channel? Um, I would just say, just start. Uh, that's what I got from going to VidCon. Uh, just start. I mean, it doesn't matter what kind of phone you have, what kind of device you have, what kind of camera you have, microphone. Just do it. Have fun. Create. I mean, it's 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 a work in process. And I think the other thing that I thought was funny is I always hated my voice on um, always hated my voice on anything recorded. And I think now the more I do it, I either am getting used to my voice or I hate it less. Maybe some of you will hate it and leave that in the comments. But anyway, you I mean I think I'm getting better at editing, I'm getting better at uh, trying to talk, I'm getting better content, I hope. Um, so you I mean I think that's part of it. You just you grow with it. You I mean one one thing that I remember hearing is that nobody's an expert of anything until they do 10,000 hours of it. So remember that way. Do 10,000 hours of YouTube, then you're probably an expert. But until then, you're just a beginner like you and I. But you mean even even the big people, the big names. You mean most of them are. They might have got lucky, they might be interesting, they might have other ways that they got to there, but they're still probably not experts. They might not be able to recreate themselves the next time. Okay, so that's my day. Um, here's Riyadh International Airport. Pretty quiet, like I said, three o'clock. And um, I hope to be in DC, or sorry, I hope to be in JFK in 15 hours, 16 hours. The flight's like 14 and a half hours. So, talk to you later. Signing off, bye.